Hi, I'm Carly Bell and welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to be going over a new toy that I got in my craft room, which is the Luminaris 200 white toner printer. So, little backstory. I started off making shirts using vinyl or HTV. Um, and I had a silhouette, I started with a silhouette portrait, this is a little one. Then I upgraded to the silhouette cameo, which is a big one. I was really tempted to buy the Pro, I think they have a, I forget what they're called. They have really big ones now. <laughs> Very tempted to sign, to, to trade in for one of those, but <clears throat> stopped. Um, and I loved making HTV shirts um, for friends and family and acquaintances and I was selling locally. Then I learned about sublimation and I got a Epson printer and converted it to sublimation and so much easier than vinyl because you don't have all that weeding and layering. Um, however, you are limited by a few factors like um, the polyester count of the shirt and you can't print or press on dark colored shirts and it does not print white ink. So in comes the new printer. So I was doing some research and I wanted to see about getting a printer that could print on any material and could print white so I can print on a black shirt. And I found two options. One is called a DTF or direct to film and the other is the white toner laser printer. Okay. Now DTF is really cool because it prints on a film and you can put it on anything. However, there are two parts of it that are a little intimidating to me and seem like a process. And that is you have, once you print it, you have to put it in a special powder, which is the adhesive, and then it has to cook in an oven. And looking at the specs for the sizes of these things, they were just not compatible for me. So after learning about the white toner printer, it is the size of an office printer and it does not take up much room at all. It prints directly on a film and there is just an easy pressing step to do the adhesive instead of the powder stuff. There's just a sheet that you press on the back of it to give that adhesive and then it could go on anything. So I'm really excited to tell you about that printer today. I got it for Christmas. Um, just this past December, it's now January, um, so I'm sorry I'm late with telling you about it, but I needed to unbox it and play with it and do all the things. So today I'm going to show you some, uh, a little bit of the unboxing, and we're going to go through the process of how you print a design and then put it on a shirt. Here is the picture of the package that I got delivered to my house. It was huge. It came on a pallet. Um, it was really exciting delivery to get, but as you can see, I got two very large boxes on a pallet, one which is the, t the white toner printer, and the other which is the heat press that I got with the bundle that I um, ordered for this. So the unboxing was not something to be really filmed, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, here is some video showing what it looks like when you open it. You could see, you know, of course, styrofoam there. It, it does come with a, what is this, a voltage transformer. So this is like, there's a step of you plug into the wall, into this, and then from this to the printer. So basically it just came with the power cord, the toners. Um, the pr toners are actually pretty much already set up for you, um, and the printer itself um, and then there is the actual sheets that I'll go over in a little while. So that is it for as far as unboxing goes. Sorry I didn't film very much of it. It was way too much. Here is just a little preview of what the heat press looked like. Styrofoam and heat press. Pretty straightforward stuff. So I'm excited to jump in to show you how I use this, these things. So just to show you, this is the shirt I made myself for Christmas with the machine. This has been worn and washed several times. And the nice thing is that it is very soft. It's, um, it is not 
you know how when vinyl, when you press vinyl, you feel the the layer. Now it feels more like a screen printed shirt. So I just wanted to show you a shirt that has already been made and washed several times because I, I wore this every weekend <laughs> for Christmas. Um, so you could see it in action. So today I'm going to make Mardi Gras shirts. One of my go-to places for finding designs to print onto shirts is Creative Fabrica. Um, I've been using their website for years and it has for me, it has everything I could ever want. <laughs> there are fonts, there are graphics, there are all kinds of crafty stuff. And then I have embroidery. So y'all, but um, I use everything on here. It, it's really, really a great resource for me. And I just went to the website and I noticed they're running this awesome deal. This is the same deal they ran for Black Friday. You can get the all access pass for $4.99 a month which it's normally $30 a month, first off. I, they gave me a discount a while back to where I can get, my followers could get it for $20 a month, but now it's $4.99 a month. And when I say all access, it literally, anything on this website that you see, you can download. So instead of paying $2, um, or oh Lord, that can't be right. Um, <laughs> um, instead of paying, you know, different fees for all of these things. Everything is just free. You download it um, when you pay the uh, subscription fee. Okay, sorry about the little noises and dings. I turned them off now. So, okay, uh, this is where I come to find things. So the design I had on my shirt, the, um, what does it say? It says torn between looking like a snack and eating one. <laughs> um, so I want to do Mardi Gras. So let's look Mardi Gras. And oh, here's some cute ones. Um, this is cute. There's all kinds of cute stuff. So basically you just need a PNG, right? That's all we need is a PNG. Um, there's a saying that I really like, I wonder if they have, it's called king cake calories don't count. <laughs> um, let me type that in because that's what I want. You see the theme here. Let's just do that. Okay, yeah, king cake calories don't count. Oh, this one's cute. I like this one, it looks like an airbrush shirt just from a glance. Okay, I think I want this one. So I am gonna go sign into my account because I have the all access subscription and then this is gonna go away and say download. And then we are gonna go open it up in the program that comes with the Luminaris 200. So I'm now in the Lumen Rip software. Um, comes with the machine and I have to say I'm really impressed with this software it's really cool the what I've gotten to use it for and seen its capabilities so <clears throat> it is not something where you're going to create your design like if you're piecing together fonts and cute little things you can do that in Adobe Illustrator or even Silhouette Studio um, is a great program and you can get the free version um, but once you have your design the way you want it, or you're just purchasing a, des a design like I did, um, you can just put it in. So here is the king cake. It was zipped. Um, I unzipped it. And here's the PNG. So I'm just going to drag and drop. All right. And oh no, I've made it angry. Okay. Um, so reserve jobs older than seven days will be deleted. Do you want to? Let's do that. Okay, so it deleted all that stuff I made. All right, so here are my king cake calories don't count. Um, so what I just really need to do is resize it to what I want for me. Now, I wear a small medium shirt. So typically I don't like my designs to be wider than 10 inches. So I am going to go over here and just put 10 
and now it's and it does it proportional um, and now I just need to rotate it I think this does that rotate there we go so for me this fits perfectly on a normal eight and a half by eleven sheet however this because one of the t number one questions I had when looking at the printers is I wanted to be able to print large format and although the printer only prints eight and a half by eleven sheets the software allows you to take a really large design and it splits it and it's cool because it doesn't split it in a way that's like straight across it will like go around colors and almost like a puzzle piece so I did it for Christmas and it worked really well um, and I'm gonna do a separate video all on that later but I just want you to know you do have the capability to print large format it is there because that was that was one of the most important things besides the printing white ink and on any material was the large format so I put that here and that's pretty much it I'll do another video when we when we do the video on the splitting I'll show you some of the other really cool features on here like for instance sometimes I'll buy a PNG but I really don't like the colors uh, that they use and I don't think I can do that in Illustrator. I When they give you the Illustrator file, the EPS file, I can open it and change colors and do all kinds of stuff. But if you only get a PNG, I'm not aware of a way you can change colors. This program allows me to do that. Um, so if I wanted all what's black to be white, printing, printing it on a white shirt, a uh, black shirt, um, I could just click a button, it selects everything is black, and I could change it to any color I want. So I want you to know about that, but we don't have time to go over it today. I have this. Now I just need to go load my film on my printer and click print, and then we'll move on to the next step. So here is my printer. I have I'm a bit of a hot mess going on over here with my other camera set up. So um, I just want to show you just open the tray and I have the film and it might be hard to tell on screen, but this is the glossy side. This is the matte side and you want to put it into the machine glossy side down and these these papers can kind of stick together so you want to make sure you have just the one and push it down and in and then you're ready to print so here are the two film and adhesive parts, the two-step transfer. Oh, I got this upside down. <laughs> um, that comes with your printer. So step one is you print onto the film, which we've done. Step two is you add the adhesives to the back of the film. And this just looks like a normal sheet of paper. Um, mine had some yellow dots on what would be the wrong side and just nice and smooth. This is the adhesive side. So you can look at this. This is the glossy side. That's the glare you can see going on here. Um, it, the print is actually on the matte side. This is the side we have to have the adhesive stick to. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And what you wanna do is lay your film down, glossy side down, so you know you have it right when you're looking at it and it's the mirror image right have that then take your adhesive sheet and you are going to put it right on top of your film and one trick to help you with getting it off when you're ready is to fold in that little corner there so now we're going to go over to the heat press and all we have to do is press this to get the adhesive to go on the back of our film. So here is my new Ricoma heat press. It came with my printer package. Um, I'll have to make something at the end, but I wanna make sure I let you know everything I got. I got the printer, I got the A film, the B um, part, so the AB part of the um, printing. It came with all the toners for the printer, including black, because you can actually convert it into a normal laser uh, copy printer. 
I wouldn't want to do that, but you have that option. <laughs> the um, heat press, the software, it came with online training, just like when I got my Recoma uh, embroidery machine um, and support and help and all of that. So um, it's been really great. So the heat press, I'm very excited about it. I got the 15 by 15 version um, because I'm actually limited by my, my desk that I keep it on. I wanted the 16 by 20, but it was too big for my space. So I was like, I had a 15 by 15 before my old heat press um, and that worked perfectly fine. I don't need a bigger one. So I got the 15 option, <laughs> but if, you, if you're if you doing like full size shirts, go for the 16 by 20. Um, nice features, pulls out, has auto open, digital screen, programming, all that stuff. So we'll go over that in another video. Step one of printing, preheat the machine to 310. Then they want you to warm up this bottom. Um, and so they want you to close the clamp and let that sit. Now, you can do it like this. I have sometimes misaligned my adhesive sheet with my film sheet, and I got a little strip of adhesive on my platen. I think that's what this is called, the rubber piece. And to avoid doing that, now they gave me a whole bunch of sheets of Teflon too with the, the package, I forgot to mention that. So I put a sheet of Teflon down. Then you, you're always gonna use a sheet to put on top your stuff when you're pressing. But I started putting a sheet on the bottom because I don't want to get adhesive on the bottom. It's just, just me. That's a personal thing. So now we're going to close this. Super easy. And it's going to preheat for 300 seconds. And then it's going to pop open by itself. And then we're ready to merge our film and adhesive sheet together. Okay, so just opened up, finished preheating. So now I can take my little sandwich I made with the film and the adhesive sheet. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's, it's on top of your design, right? And you have your little peeled up corner, which will help you. And you do wanna cover this with a Teflon sheet. And now, the setting for this, it stays the same temperature, 310. However, um, it's only for 120 seconds. All right, so transfer one, 310 for 120 seconds. I select that in my programs, check, apply, ready to go. So now we will press this. Now the next step, once this pops open, I can say is the only kind of tricky part of this process. This is the one that takes a little bit of finesse and a little bit of practice. And what we're going to do is we are going to do a hot peel. And when I say hot peel, as soon as it opens up, we need to start peeling. So actually the first step is I always keep like a little towel next to my heat press. The first step when it opens up is we're going to hurry up and rub the top of the paper. This is, I think, just to make sure the adhesive really found well, but you've got a good amount of pressure going on here. So it's, um, I think it's just the extra precaution. Um, now, once I rub it, I'm going to grab my corner. Now you can use, like I use a pencil <laughs> to touch the screen. I also have this little uh, stiletto with a silicone tip. I sometimes use this and you'll see me when I'm peeling um, that it helps me kind of keep things in place. So I just wanted to warn you, this is the part I'm going to jump in and rub and peel um, the top off, and that's what takes a little bit of finesse. I'm gonna take this top Teflon sheet off. I'm gonna rub, and I can pull this out, but I'm not worried about, I shouldn't touch my um, thing. Okay, now this is my little thing. I use this to kind of peel up because it is hot. I also have a glove, but I never put it on. Okay, there we go, peeled. And I use my stiletto to kind of hold it. And you want to peel with like a consistent amount of pressure. It is not, it doesn't go like as easy as when you like weeding 
heat transfer vinyl, for instance, it's not, it doesn't pull that easy. So we're going to pull, try to have a consistent amount of pressure. The only tricky part is this last little tiny bit. Sometimes I don't do well. Let's see if it's going to work good for me today. I go really slow at this part so it doesn't mess up. There we go. So that last little where it kind of comes off. But my first time I did it, it pulled off some of the ink off of the transfer, the, um, the film. That's the, the only tricky part I've had for the first few times I messed it up. Now I think I got it. It's peeling consistently and I go a little bit slower on that last piece so that it doesn't just pop off too fast or too much, I guess you would say, and that I don't want any ink to come off of my film. So here are some blank shirts that I picked up um, and I went through my stash and I have a green and a white. Sorry, the coloring doesn't look good because this pink messes up everything. Um, so I have the green and I have the white and here is my film. And now this has adhesive on the back and you can see like where I was pushing with my stiletto like the little hole that it pushed off the adhesive in that section, but it doesn't matter because we just want it to be really on the, on the back of where the ink was, right? So now, which color shirt should I do? So I was worried the green would be too dark with the black, like I should have changed the writing to white, but I think it looks good. I might do that. Okay, let's double check with the white. It looks good with the white too, but I think I'm gonna go with the green. So I'm gonna do it on the green shirt because um, Mardi Gras colors are purple, green, and gold. So that makes it a little more fun. And this is normally a shirt I would not be able to sublimate on. Um, and this is 48 eight polyester. So the percentage of polyester is not good enough to, um, to sublimate on either. So, but this will work on 100% cotton. It just so happens these are the shirts I have because I like them because they're soft. So we want to prep our shirt for pre pressing. So you see this is all a mess. So the first thing I'm going to do is press it. And then I like to fold it in half and press it again and get a crease. And I am going to take my film and make a little crease at the top of the bottom to make sure that I put it in the center of the shirt. That helps a little bit with alignment. The other thing I wanted to tell you was that sometimes depending on where you're putting that, that B sheet, the adhesive sheet, they have these weird lines. So trim those off before you press. So I usually just go around the whole thing and trim. just to make sure that, like especially like in this corner right here, I don't want that. Um, if they have any weird adhesive lines, the adhesive is clear, but like I could see on my heat press where it got on there, it, it'll leave like a little bit of a, of a line. It'll be noticeable, especially on a darker fabric um, shirt. So trim around it, mark the centers, and prepare your shirt. Okay, so I'm ready to get my shirt ready. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about the three different temperatures you press at depending on the material you're pressing on. So this is specific for shirts. If you're doing a 100% cotton shirt, keep it at 310. If you're doing a poly cotton blend like I am doing now, you want to have it at 285. If you're doing like 100 polyester, 100% 100 polyester, you want to lower the temperature to 265. So I'm going to put mine at 285 and I'm just going to press it for 15 seconds um, to get the wrinkles out and to get my center crease.
I love this pull out platen. I'm like, now I don't need this here anymore. I'm going to take this off. But this makes it so nice because it's, it's much easier to work without burning yourself up there because I did that before in my old heat press. All right, so I'm just doing a rough center. Gonna close. It didn't, um, my temperature hasn't gone down to 285 yet, but since this is just a pre-press, I'm not too worried about it. And one thing I did learn is that say you close this and I forgot to change the settings, like I forgot to change the time and it's still on 120 seconds, you can really just push it open and it will open. So that was one thing I, I freaked out about. I'm like, oh, I closed it and it's still on the 300 second mark. And I was like, I don't want to press it that long. You can open it, even though it's, it seems like it's hard, it's not. So now I'm going to fold my shirt in half. And this is just my way of making sure my design is centered. And so, I gotta fold it in half and this will make a little crease which I can see nicely when I'm centering my design when I'm putting my design and my film on the shirt now one thing I did forget I usually do put my Teflon sheet over the shirt when I'm pre-pressing it and I forgot to do that so use your get used to using your Teflon sheet cover everything just in case it does not hurt I actually have some of my old heat press I haven't put it on here yet these are just like some super strong magnets I got on Amazon and I had a Teflon sheet like magnetized always on the top so that's an option you can do too so here is our shirt pre-pressed and I put a crease down the middle that looks good. And now I'm putting, figuring out where I want this. So I made my little marks on my paper. So I'm lining that up. And I like to do the three, let me hide this, okay. Three fingers. I don't know if I should do the three fingers from like this seam or from the top. I'll do in between. And I want my finger to be not where the top of my film is, but where the design starts, because sometimes you might print something and your design might be way down here. Don't do the three finger thing and it's the top of the film. The, the design needs to be like that. So that looks good enough to me. All right, I'm gonna center that. Now, if you want, you can just go straight to your heat press and try to hold this. Um, you can also use, this is, um, what is this called? Heat resistant tape. You could tape it in place to make sure it doesn't slightly move when you're moving this over to your press. Okay, so I'm going to go put this on the press and the last step, let me make sure I'm remembering, I think it's 30 seconds, yeah. So now we're going to press it for 30 seconds at the temperature depending on your shirt. So remember, if it's cotton, 310, um, poly cotton blend, 285, 100% polyester, 265. So I'm keeping mine at 285 and I'm gonna go press it. And I just like to have it to where the collar and everything is off so I don't have no weird um, presses of the seams. And you do want to cover it with a Teflon sheet. Okay, let me get my settings right. So, parameters, and I'm doing 30 seconds. Well, actually, let me just go back home. It's easier just for me to do this. I have all my parameters set with the 310. I need to make a new set with 285. 
So it's easier for me just to up the seconds. My machine's already set to 285. So I'm gonna slide it in and go. Okay. I did forget to mention when I was putting the film, now we're working with the glossy side being face up, the matte side face down. But I think you got that because it looks like it's in the right direction. <laughs> now, this is the one thing that is different from everything I've done before with shirts is that you do not want to peel it hot. You want to peel it when it's completely cooled down. So I'm gonna take this over to my table and I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes before I try and peel this film off. Okay, it's been five minutes now, timer on my watch. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, that this has cooled off, super cool to the touch. Now it's literally just peeling it off. And with this one, I haven't had any trouble, um, like any learning curve or whatever, like the other peel. Um, the only suggestion I have is you, you see what I'm doing where I'm kind of like pushing it down and peeling? You just want to do that. Um, and I'm sure removing the tape would help. Maybe do that first. We just add a diagonal, holding it down, super easy, peel it off. Okay, so that is the peel. Now, I don't know if this translates well on camera, but in person, the first time I did this, it freaked me out because I was like, this is shiny. And I don't, I'm not a fan of shiny, but maybe you can see the reflectiveness right? So don't freak out like I did when you print this out and you're like, this is way too shiny for me. Um, this will go away and I'll show you now. So after you've done peeling it, you want to do a final press just for 15 seconds at the temperature required for your material. So let's go back over to the heat press. that got it set don't forget to cover it with your Teflon slide it in and I need to reduce the time to 15 seconds and close okay now like I said I have mine programmed but all the programs I made were for 310 because <laughs> I did like 30 more than 30 shirts for Christmas for a friend of mine that was going to Disney. Her family was going to Disney. And um, she asked me to make her a bunch of shirts. And I was like, this is perfect timing because my printer's coming in. Um, and I can test out this printer on all those shirts. So now we are done. And the shininess is gone. So now it looks like a screen printed shirt. And I like the design because it looks like airbrush to me. All right, so I put my new shirt on. I like it a lot. Um, it is soft. It is not shiny now that we pressed it, that final press. And um, it is on, you know, a mostly cotton shirt. And it printed white ink as well. Like, I would never be able to sublimate on this shirt. I'd have to bleach it first. So overall, I'm really happy with the printer. It does everything I wanted to do. And I'm excited to start making shirts and I want to start selling them. So I'll let you know if I actually make a website or anything for it in the future. But as of now, I'm going to go back to how I used to um, make shirts and sell locally. Like especially right now, everybody and their grandma wants a Mardi Gras shirt. <laughs> so I think this is something fun that I can do um, on the side while um, still embroidering and doing embroidery tutorials. But this is quick and easy, and I can sell shirts for $20, $25 a piece. Um, and I could do custom shirts if people want to um, have like a family reunion or a sports team or, you know, 
a high school, uh, you know, a club or something like that, um, I can take custom orders and print those shirts. So um, I hope this video was interesting for you in case you are looking into getting a printer. Um, so just so you know also that it is an investment. This is something that I am hoping to make money off of. This is going to be for a small business. This is not an inexpensive item to get. Like the sublimation printer is not too bad. Um, the DTF, like I mentioned before, and the white um, toner printer, that is where you're getting a business investment. So think of it that way. You are going to be selling things that you make to um, make this worth this purchase, okay? So if you are looking to start a small business or you have one already and you wanna step it up with being able to print on anything, um, I have a referral link down below um, that will send you to a page um, at Recoma and then you just put in your info and someone from Recoma will call you back, tell you all about the printer. They have a couple different packages that you can get and they offer 0% financing because I know that's a big deal. Like it's really hard to come up with a large <laughs> sum of money, but when you're offered 0% financing and can pay a monthly bill and then in my head, I do the math and I'm like, okay, if my monthly note is this much, how many shirts do I need to sell to cover my monthly note? And if it is only, you know, five to 10 shirts, then that is worth it. You know, I can, I can definitely sell that. Um, and then everything else is profit. You know, you look at it that way. So I hope this helps you. And if you're interested, please use my referral link and you'll, people at Recoma are super nice and they'll tell you all about it and, um, and help you with whatever you need to get it. Okay. And I think using my referral code might get you a discount. I'm not sure. Ask about it when, when you talk to someone, say Carly Bell said there might be a discount. Let me know. <laughs> so um, that's it for today. Um, we focused on shirts. This can print anything that you can press. You can put this on. So if you, oops, it's time to go get my kids off the bus. Up, But you can, if you have a mug press or a hat press, you can print on those things. Um, if you want to do bags, as long as you can get them on your heat press, you can print on them. So keep all that in mind. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm trying to be a good YouTuber today. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy this as much as I do because I am so excited about all the shirts that I am going to make. And I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do some things with bags too. I don't know yet, but I'm excited about all the possibilities that I have with this printer. So hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.